Welcome back to The New Rich, where you live big with less. My name's Grace Brooke. I am a professional organizer as well as a lifestyle leader. And today I'm coming to you from my home on wheels that I've lived in for four and a half years with my two children. And I want to talk to you about my morning ritual. If you've seen some of my other videos, I talked about how I have been a doer. I'm a recovering doer. I used to be addicted to hustling and being busy. And I learned four years ago, started studying about being. I had hired a, an executive business coach, Hayden Lee. He's based out of Santa Monica, California, and I absolutely love him. I would highly recommend looking into Hayden Lee if you are wanting to take your business to a whole nother level. Back then, about four years ago, I had hired Hayden because I had already had my organizing business for 17 years at that time, but I was also starting a vending business and a uh, selling a product on Amazon, so I needed Hayden's help to be more productive, to get more accomplished. And when I spoke to him, he says, well, that's great, but we are going to be focusing on being first. I said, Hayden, I really don't have time for that right now. I need to focus on doing. And he says, Grace, success all starts with being. I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. So I started learning and understanding what he meant by being. and. It was probably 12 years ago I learned this method called Be, Do, Have at a seminar I had gone to and I found it fascinating because all before then I was focused on having, then doing, and then being and I know that's what a majority of the American culture is. We are focused on what we have and that's all external. So by focusing on being first, be, you're going inward and you're focused on being the person that you want to be, then you start doing, and then ultimately you have what it is you've, um, you want based on being the person that you want to be first. So that really helped me and I began at that time working on a regular morning ritual. And my morning ritual has evolved and shifted over the years. Um, sometimes I incorporate more physical, uh, stretching, reading. Right now it's much more spiritual and sitting in silence and meditation. And so I wanted to share with you some of the steps. Before I do though, I did get started with a morning ritual with Tony Robbins. He has this strategy called priming. If you haven't heard of it, do check it out on YouTube. It's pretty amazing. And it's just like a 10 minute exercise that you can do before you start your day. Really morning rituals are all about starting your day off with a good intention. It's for me, it means slowing down I want to start my day off slow. Again, I'm a recovering doer. I don't want to hustle. I don't want to bustle. And I don't want to uh, start my morning off rushing. So I begin my day slow. I wake up a good two hours before everybody else does. This is my self-care time. And I love it. Sometimes it's still dark out and I'm just sitting in silence. I do my meditation and my I am affirmations but I start off with a good cup of coffee. And I take that coffee, I come right here to my sofa, and I sit down and I make sure that my back is straight, my feet are flat on the floor, hands on my palms, no, <laughs> hands on my thighs, palms up. And I just take the time to focus on my breathing, taking deep breaths in and then exhaling. And this is the time where I'm emptying out my mind. And I consider it something like falling back. That's the way that I describe it, to get out of my mind and down into my body, into my heart, into my soul. I think of myself kind of falling back inside and just working on bringing the focus here as well as through my breathing. So after a few minutes of that, I then begin my prayer. It doesn't matter what religion you are, if you even have one or not. I personally pray to my higher power. I also include the universe. I include all my ancestors, my guardian angels, one of them being my Aunt Gracie, who I was named after. 
um, and my father who passed away four years ago. So I just take the time and I just pray to them. And this is when I'm asking for strength and guidance. And I'm also taking the time to thank them for all the blessings that I have in my life. And I'm thanking them for keeping me safe and keeping me protected. I'm thanking them all for the little things in my life, the little things the day before, the little things in the moment. It's also a time of gratitude for me, all about appreciation. And then after my prayer, I go right into my I am affirmations. I usually have my own affirmations that I cycle through. It's again, focusing on being the woman that I wanna be. And I do struggle with courage. I struggle with fear. So I'm telling myself each morning, I am courageous. I am bold. I am fearless. I am a magnificent creator. I am a money magnet and money just flows to me with ease. I am self-accepting. I am accepting of others. I live a joyous and happy life. I am healthy, wealthy, and amazing. And these are just affirmations that again, it's kind of like all about self-love. It feels so good. And just a reminder to love on ourselves and who we really are inside. If I'm not doing my own affirmations, I do have an app on my phone that I go to and um, I'll read some of the I am affirmations there as well. After my I am affirmations, I have a book. Remember how I just mentioned courage? This book right here, I love. My son got it for me a few years ago. It's called Everyday Courage. And there's 365 passages, one for each day. And I just open it up to the current day and I read the passage. Just a little bite size of courage. And then after that, I go to my flower petal cards, which one of my dear friends, Stephanie, got me for my birthday. And you can use these cards whichever way you'd like, but I, what I do is I typically take them out of the deck or out of the holder, and I kind of spread them out, and then I just go off a of feeling, and I pull the card that is calling my name, and I pull it over, turn it over. This one says sunflower. Practice courage each day. Isn't that amazing? All about courage. These cards all have different messages. The one yesterday was Magnolia. And it says, you will find what you need in the wisdom of your heritage. So flower petal cards. They are blooming guidance from the garden. And then I have three other uh, things that I read from and pull from. Just little daily doses of money and spirituality. These ones right here are from T. Harb Eckert. He has a book called The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. I've read it a few times. I highly recommend it if you haven't read it yet. But in here, they're all about financial awareness, just financial peace, independence. So like this card right here, it says, think big and act big. And what it says is small thinking and small actions lead to being both broke and unfulfilled. Big thinking and big actions lead to having both money and meaning. The choice is yours. So I pull one of these each morning. And then after that, I move over to my next deck of cards, which are all about spirituality from Michael Singer. He has the book of The Untethered Soul and The Surrender Experiment, two more books, favorites of mine. And then these are deeper, more meaningful cards, uh, mindful, spiritual. So just grabbing one of the cards on freeing yourself. This says, that which is blocked and buried within you forms the root of fear. Fear is caused by blockage in your energy. It gives me something to reflect on, ponder, and uh, sit with for a little bit. And then my last thing that I like to do in the morning are my angel cards. These are fun cards, all sorts of different words on them, like authenticity, release, openness, understanding, balance, forgiveness. But after I pray, after I do everything, I just sit here again with my eyes closed, place my hand over the cards, and I just sit and I ask my spirit guides, my angels, what it is they want me to know for the day. And then I pull a card. And this one right here says wisdom. And so then I pin it to the top here. And I figure that's what my angels want me to know for the day. 
you can use these cards whichever way you'd like. You can pull multiple cards if you want. And I had a friend who used to do this and he would write about each card. He'd pull three cards and then he would journal about them and what those words meant for him. He reflected on them. So this is just, it's a way that I ground myself and get centered each day. And I really value this time for myself. It's all about my mind, my soul. There's mornings though, where I'll switch things up. And like I said, I'll incorporate stretching, yoga, uh, getting some exercise. There's also days when I read, but I will tell you, I absorb so much information. I love information that I have to take breaks from receiving so much information. So right now I'm on the kick where I'm not reading and I'm not watching videos and consuming information. It may be you're getting up 15 minutes earlier just to sit in silence. I'll tell you, sitting in silence was challenging for me at first because I was such a doer. It was hard to sit still. And so it did take me some time and it was through practice and patience that I started creating a new habit. And now, like I said, I look forward to doing it every morning. But you know what? If I miss a morning for whatever reason, I can do it in the afternoon or I can do it in the evening. And you can also break it up and do it throughout the day. Please do me a favor and subscribe to my channel. I have a wealth of information all about simple living, the slow living movement, and having more adventure in your life. And doing it with peace, love, and lots and lots of happiness. Thanks.